In today's hearing, dad is requesting that the minor child be drug tested because he said he smoked marijuana and dad said he had withdrawals from the marijuana. There was a petty fight at a funeral and dad is just overall hysterical in my opinion. Don't forget to check out my new true crime channel, Mom's Murder Madness. And don't forget to check out my favorite channel on Tropolis, where I found this court hearing. And I'll link to the compilation in the description. Being conducted via Zoom present is attorney Dwight Kuhn, representing the plaintiff mother, Krista Rice, and Ms. Rice, Pearson president, Mr. Kuhn. Good afternoon, Mr. Kuhn. Good, uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Is it uh, Thomas Villarreal, a junior president on audio? Yes, sir. Right. Good afternoon, sir. Good and afternoon, sir. The parties have conferred with Ms. Barrar from the front of the court. This afternoon, Ms. Barrar has provided a fine recommendation. Uh, just noting that the parties are still on the wait list at Family Counseling and Childhood Services. Uh, the court was afraid of that because I know there's like a two-month backlog with that agency. That agency is the only agency in Monroe County that provides this type of service. So it's recommended that that, that continue um, and that the parties appear back for court to review party time April 30th at 8.30 a.m. via Zoom. Uh, we have a 16-year-old. Uh, all right, Mr. Kuhn, is this recommendation agree with your client? Yes. Um, obviously, it's, uh, it's at this point that, that this agency is so busy and so backlogged. Has there been any contact between the minor child and dad since we were last in court back your, in December? Yeah, uh, yes, Your Honor, if I might explain. Sure. Um, FaceTime? The... Day before yesterday, um, Mr. Villarreal's grandfather passed away, who was the great grandfather of the child in this case. Uh, he attended the funeral uh, where Mr. Villarreal was, um, and along with his mother, uh, who was friends with the grandparents, um, and sister, sister uh, my client's daughter. Uh, also attended, and Mr. Thomas Villarreal started an incident in, in a room full of people. Uh, Excuse me, that is wrong, false. Mr. Villarreal, just a minute, don't interrupt. I'll give you a chance to respond. Let Mr. Kuhn finish, right, please. If you want to put my client under oath, Your Honor, she witnessed the entire thing. Um, but the short version is he started an incident at verbally attacking his son, uh, told his son to change his last name, um, and that he had every intention of having nothing to do with him in two years, as soon as this proceeding is over, and essentially that he was going to make his life, my, my paraphrase of what, what he said um, to the child was that he was going to make his life hell for the next two years, Your Honor. Um, I, obviously, Mr. Villarreal is going to have a different opinion of that. Um, but this is this is part. I mean, this is what's been going on um, for a long time here. Um, well, the court disappointed to hear that, Mr. Kuhn. And Mr. Villarreal, did you want to respond? Yes, um, that's absolutely false. I went over there. I went over there. I talked to my son and my daughter, and I asked them why haven't they responded to my calls? You know, grandfather's been in the hospital for two, three weeks prior to. Um, Passing away, um, Miss, Mrs. Rice got in my face and said, "Do not talk to them. They don't. They don't want to talk to you." And she attempted to do what she does and make a scene. There was nobody, no, no one but us heard the conversation. So I don't understand what I was uh, yelling and screaming at my grandfather's funeral, sir. That is absurd. That is totally absurd and out of line. And I did not repeat anything that was said out of your mouth. So I don't know if you were there because I didn't see you. I didn't see you on the signing list, sir. So how do you know what went on other than through Mrs. Rice? Mrs. Rice decided to get loud, to get angry because I came over there to try to talk to my son. I waved to them guys. They did not look at, they looked at me and looked to, and Mrs. Rice said something that I didn't, that I didn't, did not under her breath. 
and I came over there to to say my hi, how you doing? And say there are sixty witnesses. Okay, first of all, there was one hundred and two people there. Um, so you're falsely that's that's wrong. Um, I didn't see you signing on a signing sheet to be there. So so you weren't there. So you don't know the truth. You know Crystal's truth, my truth, and then there's the real truth. Well, it's the most unfortunate and a shame on both of you for uh, conducting yourselves in that fashion in front of the children. It obviously takes two. Well, yes, uh, I, I, wanted, uh, so. I wanted to step outside, Your Honor. I was going to ask these guys to step outside. First of all, Mrs. Rice was not, is not, is not liked by my family. She does not, they do not want her around me. They do not want her around any of my family. Okay. She should not, she should have given me a call like an adult and say, your son and your, your your daughter is coming up there to look out for them. I'm going to drop them off and I'll pick them up, period. She did not have no rhyme or reason to be in my grandfather's funeral, period. We should have went outside and had a civilized conversation, but I can't, I can't have a civilized conversation with Mrs. Rice because she's never civilized. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Brown, with the, uh, I don't know what your thoughts are, Ms. Brown. What about, uh, we have a 16-year-old child. What if Ms. Scott from the front of the court interviews uh, this young man? I have no problem with that, Your Honor. I would also request that she interview the party's adult daughter who was there and overheard everything. Be more than happy yeah. to support independently what happened. Okay, she, she's not a party to this, so uh, perhaps we could just add to the recommendation, uh, Mr. Villarreal and Ms. Rice, at uh, uh, Ms. Scott in the interim. Uh, we have between now and April. Shall interview the minor child. I want to. Can I, can I uh, add to that? Uh, can I? Can I try to respond to that? Respond um, to what? Because you know, Mrs. Rice. Order. Mrs. Rice has um, coached my son into saying a lot of things. My son Wait, has maybe. told me that Mr. Villarreal, marijuana. Mr. Villarreal, Mr. Villarreal, the front of the court is. Uh, very experienced, Miss Scott, and she can tell whether or not a child's been coached. Okay, so I don't believe that. Miss Scott, do her give job. Me, give me She's her a, credit. Trained. Give me her we'll credit. Get, we're just going to add this recommendation that your son be interviewed by the front of the court. And that of is a uh, 16 year old the by the front of the court. court. Miss Scott, and she'll provide a written report, and you'll both be able to see that when we come before our okay. April 30th review. I would, like to, I would like to know the person that is interviewing my son so I could do the I've research. Said, on her. Mr. Villarreal, Catherine Scott. Catherine said Scott? It three times now. I can't hear you that well, sir. And uh, we'll get some input directly from your son in terms of what his uh, his relationship is uh, with his dad and whether he wants to see his dad. Uh, um, I'm sure Crystal Rice will have a, a very long written uh, essay for him to study. Okay. All right. You've already, you've already made your concerns known, but we'll give it a try. We'll go from there. Uh, is uh, Miss Rice, is your son in counseling? Uh, no, he is not. Um, they okay, any objection, Mr. Kuhn, that the court ordered he, that she enroll him in counseling? Obviously, he, right. he's got to work through whatever issue he's got with his dad. Can I ask for him to have a drug test? Mr. Villarreal, please don't interrupt. I'm asking Mr. Kuhn a question. Mr. Kuhn, does Ms. Rice have any objection to enrolling this child in counseling? No, Your Honor, as long as the counseling occurs uh, close to his home as opposed to being in Monroe. So that the counselor perhaps can address... The issues that this dad, we want, we want the child to have a relationship with his dad. Um, Can I say something, Ryan? And you should inform Mr. Villarreal of that counselor. The two of you should join in custody. Ms. Rice, so once you've uh, selected a counselor, inform Mr. Villarreal. I don't know if you uh, communicate by uh, text uh, or other means, but uh, you need to let Mr. Villarreal know the name uh, the name of that counselor and the location and how often, when the counselings are scheduled. So at some time, point in time, Mr. Villarreal can follow up with the counselor to find out what he can do to re restore the, and repair the relationship with his son. Okay, Mr. Villarreal, you had a question? Yes, sir. Can I have my uh, son submitted to a drug test? Um, I will pay for it. There's no basis for that, Your Honor. I'm going to object. Um, this child is... I, but I can't object. I want to no basis for the court case, Mr. Kuhn. Well, why? Why do you? Uh, is he missing school? Is he acting out of school? Has he been arrested? He or, has uh, told me violations? that he has. He has told me that he has smoked marijuana, Your Honor, and he has told me the last time I seen him, I said, I, I, he, he told me he told his mother, and I said, 
uh, there was no punishment done. And he said he got it from his mother. And his mother allows him to do that. And when he comes over to my house, he goes through withdrawals. Withdrawals from marijuana. <laughs> That's why he doesn't want to be here. So, That's the bottom this, line. In, in this court's experience, people don't go through withdrawals after smoking marijuana. If he's oh, failed in never school, yes, it's been proven around, in yes, it he's, has. It's been proven he's failed in school or has other issues, science, then maybe you can have petition the court for a drug treatment, but there's no basis for it at this point in time. So the court will not order a drug no, test. Mr. Brock, you can modify the court's recommendation, please. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so you can uh, keep on the waitlist for that agency. We'll review this April 30th at 8.30 in the interim. Uh, Mom, Ms. Rice shall enroll the minor child in the counseling and inform Dad the name of that counselor. That's correct. The court has stated... Once I'm sorry, again, there is no basis for the drug tests. There is no indication that he is uh, um, engaging in criminal what conduct. He's, that he's, no school. he's been uh, he's been sleeping all all the time. Every time he comes over to my house, he sleeps. Yeah. He throws up. He has diarrhea. Okay, what is the symptoms of that? Is is he sick every week? Every other weekend? In the court, that will conclude this hearing, Miss Villarreal. I'm not going to talk over you. Contact okay. to school, the teachers, get reports. If he's not going to school, he's missing school, he's falling asleep at school, then maybe there's a basis for that request. At this point in time, the court does not believe there's a, court, there's a basis through to order a drug test of this minor child. So that will conclude this hearing. Uh, we'll see everyone then in April. Thank you, Ms. Brower. Good grief. He seems like a lot to deal with. What did you guys think of this case? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.